In this video we will briefly introduce you to the multiplet analysis tool in Topspin. NMR resonances are split into multiplets by neighboring spins. This makes NMR fairly unique compared to other forms of spectroscopy. The spin-spin coupling is exploited for many advanced NMR techniques, but even one-dimensional spectra can provide much information. For a good primer on spin-spin coupling, check out from the university's library, basic one- and two-dimensional NMR spectroscopy by Horst Friebelin. We have also included links to a couple of useful web pages in this video's description. The multiplet analysis tool is a routine that helps sort out multiplets in proton spectra. Its output can give you an organized list of chemical shifts, multiplet types and coupling constants. It is a time-saving tool that most users could apply to interpreting their NMR spectra. We will go through several examples to show some of the more common operations of the multiplet analysis tool. This video is not meant to be a complete guide to the routine. Documentation is available in Topspin for more details. We are going to start with a spectrum of ethyl benzene. Even at 500 MHz, the aromatic region is a little too congested for multiplet analysis, so we will just focus on the alkyl region. There are two chemical shifts for the ethyl group. The quartet near 2.65 parts per million is from the methylene protons. The splitting is due to the three protons on the neighboring methyl carbon. Remember the simple rule, that the number of resulting lines in a resonance is equal to the number of equivalent neighboring protons plus one. The methyl protons come at 1.24 ppm and are split into a triplet by the two methylene protons. Another feature multiplets have is that the relative intensities of the lines follow a binomial distribution. So, while doublets will have two lines of equal intensities, triplets will have line with intensities on the ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. Pascal's triangle can be used to predict these intensities for other multiplets. Before you start the tool, make sure the spectrum is correctly referenced. You should also carefully perform peak picking. Make sure only the peaks are selected and no extra noise or small, unwanted peaks in the baseline are included. To start the multiplet analysis, select Analyze from the main menu and choose the Multiplets pull-down menu. The tutorial option will open a document that runs through the steps for using the tool. We will demonstrate some of the functions here, but review this document for more details. The first option in the multiplets pull-down menu will open the routine. You could also type mana at the command line. Let's take a quick look at the menu bar that opens in the data window. The first five buttons are tools for creating multiplet regions in the spectrum. The next two buttons are tools for combining existing regions. The buttons to the right of these are used for selecting regions or moving the selection to adjacent regions. The two icons with the red X will delete either the selected region or all the regions. The curved arrow buttons are for undo or redo operations. The next three buttons are for accessing automation options and reports. Finally, there are buttons for saving and or exiting. Fully automatic definition of the multiplets can be performed by clicking on the first button. Note, that only the expanded region shown in the window will be processed by the multiplet analysis tool. The result is the formation of brackets or trees at each of the detected multiplets. A close look at the triplet shows that the three lines of the resonance are marked with a bracket which defines the multiplicity. The color of the bracket is red and this denotes that it is selected. In the upper right corner of the window are the details of the selected multiplet. Note that the selected multiplet can be outside of the expanded window so be careful when viewing this listing. The top line shows the chemical shift. In the case of a triplet, and all odd numbered multiplets, this is the value of the center line. Below this is a row labeled L1. For this case there is just one coupling so there is only one row in this area. The M equals 3 signifies that the multiplicity is 3, or in other words a triplet. The coupling constant, J, is measured from the line spacing and reported in the second column. Note that the coupling constant is shown as a number with four decimal places. This is not the actual precision of this measurement. The resolution of a spectrum is controlled by how long the free induction decay is measured. For default parameter sets, this value ranges from 3 to 5 seconds. 
The resulting resolution in Hertz is the reciprocal of this acquisition time and will usually be about 0.2 to 0.3 Hertz. Keep this in mind as you compare coupling constants and make spectral assignments. The quartet has a four-line tree or bracket. Note that you need to click onto this area to select this multiplet to bring up its details in the top right corner. Notice that the chemical shift for all even-numbered multiplets is going to be in the center of the region. The multiplet analysis tool calculates this during multiplet creation. A report of the multiplet analysis can be shown by clicking on the icon that looks like an arrow pointing away from a rectangle. This opens a window that includes a table with the multiplets. Starting from the right, the columns have the identifying number of the multiplet, the chemical shift of the multiplet in ppm, the coupling constant, again with four decimal places, the multiplicity marked with a m. The column marked connection includes the IDs of the pair of protons that are coupled. So, in the case of multiplet 1, the methylene quartet, the coupling is to the proton labeled 2, the methyl triplet. Of course, the reverse is true for the methyl multiplet in the next row of the table. The last column is labeled integral label. This should show the relative number of each proton intensity. This value is usually wrong and it does not use the actual integrals you produced in Topspin. You can try to update this with the Generate Integral Label button at the right, but this fails more often than it works with this version of the software. We will see this a little later. Double-clicking on one of the lines in the table will open up a dialog box where you can give the resonance an identifier name. This is an optional step. Here I am going to identify this multiplet as the methylene. You could also define the connections in the bottom section of this dialog box. In this case, there is only one other multiplet and the software has correctly made the connection. The methyl can also have its label entered. Now the main results table will use these identities in the ID column and in the connection column. I am going to exit the report by clicking on the Generate Integral Intensity button. Notice that the label on each multiplet tree has changed to reflect the values we gave them. When we reopen the report, notice that the integral label has changed, but it is still wrong. This does not have an effect on the multiplet assignments but it will carry over to some of the output I will now show. To obtain an editable table, click on the Start Editor button. This editor will allow you to copy and paste this information into other applications. Going back into the report, we will open up perhaps the most useful output option of the multiplet analysis tool. Clicking on the button labeled EXP brings up the results formatted as what you use for most journal manuscripts. However, note that this carries the erroneous integral intensities and you will need to manually edit these. In the case of ethyl benzene these values should be 2H and 3H for the methylene and methyl respectively. Another small inconvenience of the tool is that because of the formatting of the text, the program produces an HTML file. This file is saved in the active processing folder of the dataset. This is usually the folder labeled number 1, in the folder marked pdata. Even with these shortcomings, this output can be a significant time saver for interpreting and reporting NMR results. The next example is a spectrum of 3-butyne 2 ol Excluding the OH, this molecule has three resonances and due to the triple bond the alkyne proton couples the methyne proton. Let's start the multiplet analysis tool and then automatically define the multiplets with the first button. Trees are generated for the three multiplets in the spectrum. Let's take a close look at each. The methyl resonance at 1.49 ppm shows as a 6.6 Hz doublet due to coupling with the methyne. The multiplet bracket looks correct. The alkyne proton is also coupled to the methyne and is the 2 Hz doublet at 4.54 ppm. The bracket on this multiplet also looks correct. The methyne proton is split into a quartet of doublets. The larger quartet is due to coupling to the three methyl protons. The smaller doublets are due to the coupling with the alkyne proton four bonds away. Note how the tree has two levels that arise from the two different coupling constants. The table at the top right also has two rows that includes the two different submultiplets and the two coupling constants. The tree levels will increase for each equivalent coupling in a multiplet. 
the report for this spectrum will show three main rows for the three chemical shifts. Note that line number 3 has a second subrow for the additional coupling. The automatic connections are correct but the integral labels are wrong. The experimental report output shows the complex multiplet as a doublet of quartets. This nomenclature puts the smaller splitting first. Either ordering is appropriate as long as you list the multiplicities and the coupling constants in the correct order. The last example is a spectrum of a fairly complex molecule. Pioglitazone is a drug used to treat type 2 diabetes. The broad peak near 3.9 ppm is from water. Despite the overlap, it will have no effect on the multiplet analysis. Let's enter the multiplet analysis tool and run the automatic region detection. We need to expand each multiplet to view the success of each region. Starting with the methyl peak near 1.22 ppm we see a triplet that is correctly detected. Next, we will expand the region between 2.3 and 3 ppm. The peak at 2.5 ppm is from the residual protons from the solvent, DMSO. We can delete this from the analysis. First click on the bracket above the resonance. Once it is colored red indicating it is selected, bring up a pop-up menu by clicking on the right mouse button. This menu has many options that are included as commands in the button bar. Down in the bottom half is the choice to delete the selected multiplet. The quartet at 2.78 looks correct so we can proceed to the next region. The resonance at 3.05 is incorrectly defined as two separate doublets, not a doublet of doublets. We can correct this by coupling the two. There are two options in the button bar to combine multiple regions. The first, highlighted here, will allow you to click and select multiple brackets before choosing to combine them. This is a little awkward in operation and we prefer using the second option. This button will open a dialog box that simply lets you enter the number of the brackets you would like to couple. Enter the ID number of each and separate them with a comma. Then either hit the return key or click OK. Now the two separate doublets are combined to form a doublet of doublets. The other two multiplets in this region look correct so we move to the next area. The triplet at 4.39 is correct, but the doublet of doublets at 4.85 has been wrongly identified as two overlapped doublets. The easiest way to correct this is to delete the two brackets and create the multiplet manually. We delete the two brackets one at a time, again by selecting them and then choosing delete multiplet with the pop-up menu brought up with a right button mouse click. Besides the fully automatic region selection, there are many options to create multiplets. Some of them are quite awkward. We recommend that you use the full manual option by selecting the button with the arrow pointing down on a bracket. This option requires a little more work than the others. However, it is easier to work with this function and provides greater control of the defined multiplet. When you select this option, the mouse starts to move two vertical cursors. The thicker cursor moves along with the mouse pointer. The second cursor seems to lag with the movement. Looking closely, you will see that this cursor tries to stick on the closest peak as you move the main cursor across the resonance. With just the thinner cursor on a peak you can left click the mouse to add it to the multiplet you want to create. Note there is a very small line at the top of the peak that has been added. For a multiplet like this you would be tempted to click all four lines. We will see that this is not the correct approach. When you are finished with the selection, click the right mouse button and select Define Multiplet in the pop-up menu. As you can see the routine treated this selection as a simple four-line quartet. The relative intensities of this multiplet is not consistent with this interpretation. This pattern is a doublet of doublets. To create the correct pattern, we have to create the first set of doublets with the smaller coupling constant. The smaller coupling constant of any multiplet is always the spacing of the two outer lines. So, let's exit the manual region creation tool by right-clicking and selecting Finish Current Mode. Then delete the multiplet. Now we can re-enter the manual create tool and just select the first doublet. We then can define this as a multiplet. Next, we can repeat this for the second small doublet. With the two smaller doublets defined we can now couple them with the tool we used earlier where we enter the ID numbers for the newly created regions. 
This gives the correct doublet of doublet tree for this resonance. Moving to the aromatic region we see these two oddly shaped doublets. This is a classic example of a 1-4, or para-substituted benzene ring. Technically these multiplets are a second-order splitting pattern called A, A'B, prime, B, B prime spin system. For this analysis we will ignore this fact and just accept the simple doublets defined by the multiplet analysis routine. The next three resonances are from the protons on the pyridine ring. The smaller coupling constants are from the 4-bond or meta-coupling while the larger splitting is from the 3-bond coupling of the adjacent protons. The automatic selection correctly defined these shifts. Back to the full spectrum, we can see a singlet peak near 12 ppm. By default, singlets are not included in the multiplet analysis automatic detection. That means they will not be included in the report. To include singlets in the report you can use the manual defined tool and create a multiplet with just the single line. The region will show the multiplicity as one with a coupling constant of zero. The report for this spectrum has the correct listing for the chemical shift, multiplicities and coupling constants. However, some of the connections are incomplete. Notice the zeros in the connection column. To add connections for resonances, you can double-click on a row to bring up the Assign Connections dialog box. In this case the small coupling of about 1.6 Hz for the protons on the pyridine ring showed a difference that was a little too big for the software to recognize as being the same. Since the resolution on this spectrum is only about 0.3 Hz, the difference between this value and the proton with the spacing of 1.9 Hz coupling is within the experimental uncertainty. So, we can pick the coupling partner with the 1.9 Hz spacing from the table to manually make the connection. After we click OK, the table is updated with the new connection. We can continue filling in all the known connections to help interpret the spectrum. However, the experimental output does not require the connections to give an accurate report. Just remember to correct the intensity section since these are usually erroneous. This concludes our video on the multiplet analysis tool in Topspin. While it is not perfect it can give you a faster and easier way for extracting information from one-dimensional proton spectra. Just be careful examining the automatic results for each resonance and correct multiplets that do not get defined accurately. Also use integration to determine the relative intensities of each resonance and include that in the report. Let us know if you have any questions and we would be happy to assist you with using the multiplet analysis tool or any other aspect of using NMR spectroscopy in your project. Thanks for watching.